Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at modern CSS units and we set the sizes of a whole host of properties and define those values with a range of different measurement units. We've got pixels, rems and ems, viewport height and viewport width, vmin, vmax, percentages, millimeters, inches, centimeters, points, quarter, millim quarter millimeters and many more. You certainly don't need to know all of these and over the next few videos we'll look at what the most important CSS units are and in which circumstances developers use them today. Without units you couldn't declare that an image should have 10 pixels of blank space around it, that a border should be a certain width or that a section should cover 80% of the screen height. This was originally one video but with the kind of depth that I wanted to cover um, the video ended up close to uh, an hour long and nobody's going to watch that so I've started again and broken the videos down into uh, separate topics. This first video is going to cover the difference between absolute and relative units and we'll look at one of each in particular that are like the go-to units that developers use. Pixels when we want a fixed size and percentages when we want a relative or adaptive size. Developers that I know gravitate to one of these two by default but not always correctly so we'll look at both and find out where you should use and shouldn't use them. In the next few videos we'll focus specifically on relative units and the next one is going to look at M's and REMs. The third one will cover viewport height and viewport width which allows us to set something relative to the height or width of the viewport. To begin with, let's make it clear that there are two main groups of CSS units, and those are relative units and absolute units. Relative units you may have heard of include M's and REMs, VH and VW, and percentages, and absolute units include pixels, centimeters, inches, and millimeters. We use absolute units when we want something to be fixed in size, and we use relative units when setting a size of one element relative to another, or when we want the size of an element to adapt to different screen sizes. I know that this is super confusing, so I'll show you what I mean shortly. But first, how do we specify some value in a given unit? Well, we use an abbreviation of one or two characters usually to denote which unit a value is expressed in. The only exception to this rule is zero, which does not need to be followed by a unit, as zero pixels is the same as zero inches or zero percent. They're all zero, so we can just use the zero without any unit specified. This is the CSS specification that outlines how CSS is supposed to work. There's a section here on absolute lengths and we see that CSS defines pixels as being equivalent to 1 96th of 1 inch. I don't know if you can see this but I have a box that is 1 inch square and inside is a 1 pixel square. I'll zoom in so you can see. And this is the uh, yellow square at 100 pixels, and then at 10, and this is it at 1 pixel. So this is 1 96th of an inch. And if I change the pixel to be 96 times larger, you see that the box is now the same size as the inch square box. Often when we begin learning web development, we're using pixels to do things like define font sizes or height and width or margins and paddings and borders and so on. They're the first unit that we learn and the first unit teachers like me will usually show you as they're uh, really easy to grasp. Using a fixed size makes less and less sense with the variety of screens people use. I don't think I've ever used any of the other absolute units that we saw in the CSS specs other than to teach them and explain that they exist. Instead, modern developers use relative units like percentages, which allow us to define some size relative to some other value. Most commonly, I would use percentages to define the width of something. And let's have a look at a couple of examples. Let's say I have two images and I want them to sit side by side, taking up approximately half of their parent container's width each. Maybe slightly less than that, so we can implement some spacing around 
each image. If I was to do this in pixels, I would need to know how big the parent's container was in the first place. We might not always know that, and also we would need to be confident that the images would not be affected by screen size, that they're not going to overflow the browser window. So instead, we could use percentages to set the width to be 49% for each image, but 49% of what? Well, we're saying we want the image to take up 49% of the width of the image's parent element. The beauty of using percentages is that I don't need to know how big the parent is. Whatever the size of the parent, each image will always be 49% of it. If the parent element size changes according to the size of the screen, so will the images as they will always be 49% of the width. So I have this code pen here in which we can model this. We have a couple of images in a container and we can see that they're not side by side and they overlap their container currently. The images are really big as we're asking for images that have a resolution of 900 by 600 pixels. They're randomly selected by Unsplash so you might see the images change whenever we save. The container is marked by this black border and it is set currently to a fixed width of 800 pixels. Let's select the images here and set the width to be 49% so that they've got a small gap between them. Once we do that, they are side by side. If I add a third image, uh, we're going to have a problem. The third one isn't gonna sit side by side as each is taking up almost half of the container and this one will fall underneath. Why don't we do something like 30% each? Now we have each image taking up almost a third of the container. Actually, I'll set this container to be a flex container and I'll space the content evenly. Uh, and this is Flexbox, by the way. I'm not going to explain it here as we'll focus on Flexbox fully later on in other videos. I'll put the images to 33% actually, so they're closer to a third of the container each. And with percentages, we don't have to manually work out a set number of pixels for the images to fill this 800 pixel wide container. Maybe we don't even know the size of the parent. This container could of course be something like 80% of its own parent, for example. So hard coding a pixel value for the images inside of this container wouldn't make sense as that 80% could be any size. It would quickly throw the images off kilter if we set a hard coded pixel width. But with percentages, each image adjusts as the parent changes size. Each image here in this case will always be one third of that 80%, whatever size your parent container is. Percentages don't always work like this, referencing the size of the parent element. They work differently with other CSS properties. Let's have a look at line height, which is one example. So if you set something like line height to be 150%, for example, we're not saying 150% of the line height of the parent, we're saying line height is 150% of the font size of the element itself. So as well as being relative to the parent element, we also see percentages used as being relative to another property on the element itself. So let's look at that. We have this paragraph, which is 50 words of placeholder text, and in the CSS panel, I'll specifically define the font size for this paragraph, which is uh, 16 pixels. If I set line height to 150%, it is 150% of the font size. So in this case, it should be 24 pixels. If I change line height, um, and to specifically state 24 pixels, we see no change. So in this case, line height is a percent of the font size of this element itself. At 150%, if I change the font size to 20 pixels or 30 pixels, we see that it scales nicely and is always going to be 150% of whatever the font size is. So the way that percentages work does vary, each time it is always a percentage of some other value, and what that other value is can change. If you're unsure what you're setting a percentage of, it's always best to read the documentation on MDN, um, and if we scroll down to where it says values, under percentage it says relative to the font size of the element itself. For width, which we looked at with the images, percentages define the width as a percentage of the element's containing block's width. 
Okay, so we've looked at the idea that differentiates absolute and relative units. Absolute units create a fixed size or length in a unit like pixels or inches or centimeters and so on, and relative units set a size or length relative to something else. This could be the parent element, for example, so we could set an image to be 50% of its container. It could also be relative to one of an element's own properties. Line height, as we saw, sets, uh, sets height relative to the element's font size. As a guide, I usually avoid using pixels for font sizes, except for when I'm teaching. And that is because pixels are quantifiable and easy to grasp as a unit for new learners. In the next video, we'll see Ems and Rems, which are much better options to use for setting font size, Rems in particular, and we'll see why in the next video. I also often use pixels for small fixed details on a page. Um, like the width of a border, for example, or setting a maximum or minimum width of a container. Things that you're not looking to scale as the screen size changes. I like to use percentages for defining layouts, say a gallery of images within some parent. We did see a small example of that here. Um, we want to set each image to be in the range of 50, 33 or 25% of the parent, depending on how many images we want to have in a row within the gallery. We could also use percentages for the links in a navbar. Perhaps I want some element that holds the links, let's call it a links container, uh, and we want that to take up one third of the navbar. Then we want to have the logo or branding take up another third of the navbar, and then the final third will be the space between the two. Okay, so that pretty much covers pixels and percentages. In the next video, we'll look at two more relative units that are pretty important, M's and REMs. We'll see how they work, what we use them for, and explore some weird quirks of using them. That video will go up shortly after this one, so I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.